uh, hey kids, you are about to listen to a, a, a comedy podcast. That means that, uh, that, that, that none of this is medical advice. If you need medic, uh, me, medical advice or medical care, uh, please, please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast featuring Dr. London Smith your number one most trusted source for health and medical information. Introducing your host, Dr. London Smith. Hello, and welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast, where we discuss fitness and health, and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives, but without it being so boring. I'm your host, DrLondonSmith.com. I would like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We've received some feedback about the excessive amount of technical medical terms that I've been using, such as pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and tutti fruity. So I will try to temper my terminology to a simpler one in the future. Here to help with that is our producer, Cameron. Hello, Mr. London. Hey. How are uh, you? I, I, I guess I'm all right. How are you doing? Another week, another you... Another week, uh, anything exciting happen lately, Dr. London? Uh, well, it sounds like you're hinting at, n- not particularly in my world. Any Anything uh, in yours? Oh, sorry, go you, on. You, you, you didn't receive anything maybe a little odd on your doorstep? Okay. So there was something I didn't, was that from, was that from you? Yes. Uh, I don't know. What'd okay. you get? Did you open well, it? Or is it not open? Well, first I tried to open it, but like it's really sealed up. You're going to need a crowbar. Yeah. Yeah. Or I honestly, like like uh, fireworks or something like that might work. Like so you have bong. to melt. You say, did you say a bong? Yes. Smoke weed every day. No, like a bomb. Okay, that that makes like more an explosive, sense. like a yeah. like a grenade. Yeah, um, yeah, because it was. I heard rumbling from inside and maybe a growling sound. Oh yeah, if it's not open, then I mean you can just throw it away because that thing is not. It's not going to still be alive. Uh, are you sure? Because I mean, I th- I thought I heard it at least moaning recently. What what did you send me? I mean, it's just some sort of a creature. I found a thing. I don't know what it is. I thought this could be like a fun Stranger Things season two type of thing where he finds the little frog type of thing or whatever. And that it could like sort of start us on a fun adventure. So I put it in the box, left it on your doorstep, and now you've probably killed it. Or it's close to death. I mean, if if you'd like, I can try to open it now, but... I don't care. Okay. It's your gift. You do with it what you like. I I don't mind people who like, you know, sell their gifts or give it away or whatever. That's it's your gift. You can do what you want with it. Okay, so I can return it then. Well, I mean there's no returns. Okay. Do you have a receipt? I since you bought it, I think you would be the one to have the receipt. Well, I didn't buy anything. I found it. Uh then I definitely okay. Like in the wild? What, what did you send me? What constitutes the wild? Outside, like, were you wandering again? Well, like, is a Little Caesars parking lot the wild? Yes. I, I, I guess it can count. Okay, so you, you found a creature. It was, is it a raccoon? I don't know what it is. I told you. Okay. That's why I thought this could be a fun adventure that might turn into like a Stranger Things thing. And then maybe we can go visit the Upside Down. And maybe we can talk about, you know, trying to bring the podcast to the Upside Down. Let the people there listen to it. Get oh, more listeners. Yeah, double the listeners because it's like opposite world. Yeah. Okay, I, I get so that. So there, our show is listenable. Right. Oh, because it's, you're saying it's not listenable here? Cause yeah. I th- well, no, it's a medical education podcast. I feel like actually having a beast or a creature of some kind it might be a distractor from you know the medical topics that we we bring up here. Oh, so I shouldn't have brought it up. I should have just like let you 
let it die, I guess. I probably just leave it in the wild where you found it. Well, I mean, you can do that if you want. It's your I, gift. I don't. I'd be. I would be disappointed if you just yeah. let it go. But it's. I mean, it sounds like it's in your living room. I don't. I don't. You keep telling me to do stuff with it. I don't have that option. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'll try to free it then. Uh. Yeah. It has started to have a smell though. Um. You know. Anyway. I had a, I had a former friend who uh, gave away freed a gift i gave him and he's not a friend of mine anymore so just consider that okay well um also with us is did you do in the house yes did you do in the house tells me that we can expect uh, a, a doctor a physician that's wow. right dr london and actually i have one more surprise i didn't even tell you about this we or any to- of the rest we today have a secret celebrity guest that i'm going to reveal by the end of the episode wow here actually secret celebrity guest do you want to say something Hey guys, this is the secret guest. Um, I'm excited to be on the, as a surprise guest on the Drop Dog podcast. Um, you know, I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, just, uh, I'm excited to, to reveal the surprise. Uh, okay. okay. Were your lips moving during that? Huh? Sorry, I thought I thought I saw your lips moving a little bit during nope during that. Okay. Oh, I'm eating. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I must have been confused. Um, but before we move on, I would like to address a bit of listener feedback. So I found this note spray painted on my back after I woke up from a nap in an alley the other day. The note reads, "Quote: It's Saturday, and you can bring a plus one." Gladys told me she thinks you're a stud muffin. End quote. Um, so, so first of all, I would like to thank this listener for uh, their insightful question for the podcast. Um, to answer your question, wow, thank you. I, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure about this occasion on Saturday, but wow, uh, tell Gladys, thank you what for the is compliment. A stud muffin? That is that a medical thing? Is that like? Is that like that, like that thing on your lower back? Is that what that is? Is that a stud muffin? Nope. No, the the thing on my back was spray painted. There. I don't think. Oh, you mean the other the? No, yeah, that's... not spray painted. The thing that like that like that it no, the... oh, wiggles I talk... around. I I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't really want to bring that up for the listeners. It's kind of a kind of private... sure. Oh no 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 yeah sure sure you can cut all this out. I'm, I apologize if this is like a HIPAA violation. Yeah, um, but yeah, is that a, is that a stud muffin? No, no. It, like I can see how you would think it's something else because it the way it kind of pulses. But mm-hmm. no, um, uh, stud muffin I believe is just a flattering term. Like saying someone's a stud and saying muffin is like sort of a uh term of endearment. So calling me a stud muffin, I, I'm speechless actually. That Gladys would say something so flattering to me. Um. And to this listener, is Gladys, is she, is she single? 
if she if she thinks I'm a stud muffin, then I'm. A, I don't know. I like I like to. I and like to just to <laughs> just to double check, you should just ask and see um, if she was referring to the thing on your back. Yeah, I guess I guess you could to our listener if if you could find out both of these things. Both are kind of. I guess both are kind of weighing on me. One in a more literal sense. Uh, yeah, it looks heavy. Yeah. Like you, when you're standing, I it lo- it it looks like you're holding a bag of groceries, not in your arms, but just like sort of how your shoulders are slumped. How I lean, it's sort back of drawing so you to the earth. I think. Yeah. I mean, I think you've gotten shorter. It's it has thrown off my center of gravity for sure. Yeah. But, but I, th- I th- like I think it's fine. It's just when you're at the doctor. I don't. I mean. Yeah, you know. and maybe maybe the the doctor coming on later will be able to help, um, c- sort of see what this is. Right. Uh, but in any case, uh, now for today's medical topic: large cell carcinoma. Large cell carcinoma makes up five to ten percent of all lung cancers, and is one of the lung cancers in the group of non-small cell lung cancers. Of course, with a name like that, that that seems kind of like a no-brainer. Um, so non-small cell lung cancer is often insidious, producing no symptoms until the disease is well advanced. Yes. Now, the most common signs and symptoms of lung cancer include you know, cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, coughing up blood. You can have wheezing, hoarseness, recurrent infections such as bronchitis and pneumonia. Um, you can also have constitutional symptoms like weight loss and loss of appetite. Yes. You can have signs of metastasis, and that's whenever the cancer has spread from its original location. And that can include bone pain, spinal cord impingement, and neurological problems such as headache, weakness, or numbness of limbs, dizziness, seizures. Yes. Uh, And so for large cell carcinoma, Cameron, I actually thought you'd be more enthusiastic because when we talked about small cell, you thought it was too small. But large cell carcinoma, you know, the name, I don't know, I thought thought you'd like it more. Um, Anyway, to to diagnose... What's that? I, I was saying that you know, I thought you'd like this particular topic. Oh, sorry. I, I was thinking about our sponsor today. It's just, it's been weighing on my mind a lot. But we can talk about that later. Unless you want to talk about it now. What are no. you talking about? You're talking about small stuff? No, I was talking about the large cell Oh, are you talking about, you're not, don't talk about my toes on the show. You know I'm insecure about the size of them. I Yeah, that's why you usually... It you looks like little you, Tic Tacs. I don't know why. I can barely I know, stand. You, Oh. Which, which is why it's weird that you bring it up all the time, but kickball no. is a nightmare. Oh. Every yeah, weekend even... in my league, I know it, the fact why that you organize... join that league. And why did you form it? I don't know. It's like I have something to prove. Yes. So don't talk about it on the show. Okay, so so to diagnose large cell carcinoma, uh, physical exam and complete blood count are taken, then ac- chest x-ray is usually the first test performed. Um, that may show a peripherally located uh, pulmonary nodule or mass. You can have mediastinal widening, um, hyalur enlargement, or pleural effusion. If you can find a previous chest x-ray, that can be helpful to see if, if there's been growth of the lesion. No, um, don't. <sighs> okay, no, I'm not talking about your toes. Yeah, but you know that my little toes look like a chest with a growth on it. I I do. That's exactly what they look like. That's what everyone says. And yeah. you know it's exactly what it smells like, too. I agreed. And I d- that's kind of neither here nor there. Cause so, so there are several methods of confirming You don't think diagnosis. I wish I had that under control? No, I do. I do, for, especially for your sake. I really do. Um, but so, so for large cell carcinoma though, uh, you'll determine sort of the method of confirming the diagnosis with, and it uh, changes colors to blend in with its background, like a chameleon. Okay. Well you say that, but I thought that was normal my whole life, but I've never seen anyone else's toes do that, but I've been too embarrassed to ask because I felt like it's a stupid question. Well, when you have poor circulation, then your toes can turn purple. Sure. And if that happens while you're over something dark colored, that doesn't mean it's blending in like a chameleon. In. That just well, means sh- like it, it just means that you have less blood. Like it, it's a coincidence. It usually happens when I'm stomping grapes 
for the wine. Okay. Well, that's for the... <sighs> and so my feet, they change color. They turn purple while I'm stomping the grapes to blend in with the background. Okay, so it's it's more simple than what I thought. So that's... So you've been doing this your whole life. Yeah, I mean, five or six, probably. You were stomping grapes to make wine for that long. Yeah, not for me. You know, for my parents. Yeah. It's one of the chores, you know, do the dishes, stomp the grapes. Right. And you and you thought... So, did you notice that whenever you're out from the grapes that your skin still stays changed because it's staining your feet the grapes the skin of the grapes oh i wouldn't know they go right into my purple shoes i've got these um they're purple jordans yeah they're really they're they were white jordans that i uh stomped grapes in yeah they're just normal jordans that i like white jordans that i stomped grapes with yeah. Okay, so I feel like there's not really much to say there then. You you probably stained your feet and your shoes with the same stain and that's what caused them to to appear to be camouflaged. Does that make sense? Um we'll talk about it after the show. So anyway, so the methods of diagnosis uh, they could include bronchoscopy, um, sputum cytology, mediastinoscopy, thoracentesis, thoracoscopy, uh, and thor- transthoracic needle biopsy. Um, along with diagnosis, staging must be done in order to find out how, um, you know, the extent of the spread of the large cell carcinoma, and that will guide treatment. Um, a chest CT scan is a standard for staging lung cancer, and that will take into account the size of the primary tumor, the spread of the cancer to regional lymph nodes, and whether the cancer has metastasized. The main treatment options for non-small cell carcinoma, like large cell carcinoma, are surgery. They're still weird looking, though. And radiation. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, because they're small. I, that, I, yeah, I, they still look like little Tic Tacs, re- but, regardless of you know what's going on with it. But because most lung cancers cannot be treated. And there definitely treated, is too much space between it. Current treatments. Skilled palliative right? care is important. Again, uh, I feel stupid asking this, but like... There's two, there's the gaps are too big. Yeah, no, it, your your feet have an odd shape to them, but you know I have, I have uh, sort of monkey toes, right? Yes, the mine are extra long. Yes, yeah. Well, and it's made worse because I I insist on wearing those runner shoes that look like feet, and so my oddly shaped feet like have to be forced into it, like I'm a you know, a geisha who's crushing the bones in her feet to fit into a smaller shoe size yeah but i mean you always say it's worth it yeah the speed that i have when i wear them is unbelievable well anyway of course you advising all patients who smoke to stop smoking is critical for fast them. as hell yeah yeah no one can stomp grapes faster than my yeah i feel like faster than me when I wear those. When you wear the shoes, yeah. Yep. Well, I uh I I guess that's that's a good time to go ahead and just move on from there then. Cameron, do we have any sponsors today? We do, Dr. London. Okay. Uh all right, what what what's the sponsor? Toes. Just says toes. I, you might just be looking at your own toes because they're on your mind right now. No, no, no. It's an email here. Look at my phone. It's, oh, okay. it's an email. It says sponsor toes. And look, there's the payment. Yeah. Huh. I, all right. Well, thank you to our sponsor. So, to- well, I, let, let's, let's, you know, pump it up a little. Toes are great. Um, yeah, no, I use them every day. Again, they they paid us and I don't know who this is but we do want them to be happy yeah you know a happy sponsor so toes you got ten of them um maybe a couple more maybe a couple less yeah depending um, <clears throat> help you stand um you could pick things up with them I can't obviously because of the yeah the you're... odd shape and but but you're an exception like that generally most people can yeah yeah can manage I, and I understand that yeah. yeah um animals have toes animals have toes super cute. 
cats have you know little toes and stuff yeah all right that's it all right thank you to our sponsor toes all right um cameron you said that we have a a doctor as a guest today before we get to this guest Okay. Let's uh, let's hear one more word from our super secret celebrity guest that we're going to reveal at the end of the episode. Okay. Hey guys, it's the surprise guest again. Just checking in and wanted to say hey to everyone, to all my fans, and to all my um, the the people out there who have supported me, uh, teachers. So I'm excited to be on here. Can't wait to reveal the surprise. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you to our celebrity guest. I still don't know who, who that yeah, he's is. He's over there in the shadows in the corner of the room. I haven't let you see him yet. Yeah, but your lips were... It really looked like the lips were moving. But No, no, no you look over there. Like, you see that? Yeah. It looks like maybe like a lump of blankets. That's uh-huh. our... On the on a chair, that's the celebrity yeah. guest. Wow. Okay. Well, if you wouldn't mind, we'll go back to our our actual, you know, non celebrity guest. This is a physician, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Cameron, you said that you found a a doctor who apparently uh, knows me, or I know him, something like that. That's right, Doctor London. We have today with us the very special Doctor Dank. Oh, Cameron! Thanks for having me on. Oh, oh, London Smith! What's oh, up? Get out! Get out! Get out! <laughs> oh, you fucking nerd! Whoa! <laughs> okay, so for our listeners, I, he, he did. It was a no, it was a friendly punch, I guess. No, it was pretty good. No, it wasn't. No. Okay. Yeah, that seemed uh, very malicious. Yes. Uh, so that's. <clears throat> That's that's my old old buddy, Doctor Dank. Which, um, you remembered how to say it, yeah? Because <laughs> I, well, we now what well, you got to explain to me what's going on? Because yes, I did know that this was someone that you knew previously, but that's only because that's what he told me. I don't, I have no context for any of this. Yeah, I don't understand why you would let me come on in the first place. Never listened to the podcast. Well, I take that back. London tried to show it to me initially. I got through like 30 seconds. It's complete garbage. Yes. Um, yeah, totally. Do you know anyone in the Upside Down? Can't say that I do. Okay, no. yeah, cool, 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 cool. Okay, so, um, yeah, so to introduce, uh, so Dr. Dank, and uh, during my intern year, uh, going into medicine you you have your you know your attendings um you'll you'll go in as a doctor uh and you'll have your attending physicians and so dr dank um made us for one thing made every uh doctor address him as such with with the extra a's and he spelled it with four or five was it four or five it please don't hit me um i want to say it was four a's to say dr dank um well and one of the a's is the anarchy symbol that's so is right that pro- is that still pronounced the same or is it dr danarchy inc i do like that but let's let london keep going he's doing good well it was, thank thank you thank you that, and that's that is higher praise than i ever received working under him i'm on your show yeah yeah great great so um anyway he uh, so I... No, way. what did you mean by that? I'm on the show. That's oh, he's not, on the... Yeah. yeah, but that's not, that's not higher praise. Oh, it's, well, it's a, sure, it's a cause for, it's a reason to be nice to me, I think is what he's getting at here. I guess. I'll do my best. Still seems pretty malicious. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, so, uh, in turn he hates years, you. Yeah, he's okay. Um, so right, that's my, not just me, right? Nope. No, that's. He's. I think. He's this grinding is, his teeth. Yeah, and he, 
during during that first year of residency, it's pretty tough. You're working, you know, crazy hours and he would I feel I feel like I maybe got a little bit worse than the other interns. Um uh like I'd never gotten a swirly before in right. my life. Yeah. That's what we do to nerds. It's just a joke. <laughs> yeah, and and I like I I appreciate a, a funny, you know, a little gag sometimes, but no, he doesn't trust me. I say funny stuff all the time and he laughs. He never laughs. He has the worst sense of humor out of anyone maybe ever. Yeah. No, I just, trust me. I get that. But doc, wait, I want to hear from Dr. Dank. You're talking about, Oh, whatever residency, Dr. Dank. What, what, what do you think of Dr. London? I'll be honest. I thought he quit after the first six months. I didn't see yeah. him a whole lot. Um, he got a lot of abuse early on. He showed up in women's scrubs first day, and that yep. just sets the wrong tone. But I will say, with his frame, I don't know how he could fit in men's scrubs, and they don't make youth sizes that I know of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I. That is interesting. I didn't are mean those, to. Are those specially made? I didn't look I went to you know it's before you get a big paycheck as a physician so I went to the discount rack and I got you know what I could afford at the time uh I I had you know all the student debt all these bills to pay and so yeah I got what was on sale and I didn't realize that it was a, a women's scrubs but it, and I don't think most other people would have noticed but, but Dr. Ooh, Dang. once you get that once you get that big paycheck, that big physician paycheck, he said that uh-huh. was before the paycheck. I mean, that's was... like I knew a guy once, he was a physician, he signed on at a at a Baylor Medical for a, a five-year contract, 85 million dollars, big check. Yeah. So so this was a lot less than that. Yeah. Um what I was making to start out. And so so he would um so I wore those those women's scrubs the first day, and like I, once and I once I, with this doctor, there's not a uh, there's not a hold on his contract, so he can be traded to other hospitals uh, any time of the season. Wow. Okay. I, and he's so got a good agent. Yeah, especially if he <laughs> get gets, me in touch with that guy, and it's guaranteed. So even if he gets injured or something, he, and he's he's out for a few months, um, but he'll still be able to uh, cash in on that contract. And the advertising is through the roof. I feel, are you thinking of sports? No, no. Go ahead. Uh, okay, because it just sounds a little bit to me like a sports rep. Because when you said millions of dollars, that doesn't sound like most of doctor paychecks, uh, as far as I'm aware, to start yeah. out. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so I go in. I, I realize The actual that wearing... rich doctors aren't going to let you know that that's what they're making. Cause you're gonna get jealous and mean. Yeah, yeah, may, maybe, maybe. I, I guess I can't speak to that. I don't, I don't know any. At Doctor that Dank, level. how much do you make? A lot more than London Smith. I'll leave yeah. it at that. And you would never tell London how much you make, right? He'd cry. He yeah, would he's weep. Like a, he's like a loser nerd. Yeah, but I mean, making him cry very easy. Yeah, well, can, oh, I want to hear about this. Can you tell me a time in the past from, you know, when you guys knew each other back in the day that you made him cry? I think it'd be easier to go to the times where he didn't cry. No, there were no. It'd there be way easier to just yeah. talk about the uh, the uh, just one time that he cried. Way easier. London, do you want me to? No, no, no. London, you tell us about the elevator incident. So I... Look, I don't want... So I... You were so proud. I... I, I don't want to rehash it, but... Yeah, I stepped in the elevator. You were you were there. Um, you were there so was, proud? Of the... Before... So, so, so I was you there... You cried and, because you were proud of something? In the elevator? He cried of what his pride brought him to do. He instantly realized what he'd done. So that day there was this, um, there, there was someone that I liked romantically also in the elevator, which 
but the gravity of it. I, I actually don't want to tell the story. Come, I, like No, I really, I need to know what you were proud of that made you cry in the elevator with a crush. So I, I don't really feel comfortable sharing exactly what ha- It wasn't comfortable for yeah. me. L- let me remind you. Okay, so we get in the elevator. It's our group. We have three, four residents, a couple med students with us. And I guess London's crush, whoever that was. She was mm-hmm. probably fat. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, a family member of a patient, I guess, walks into the elevator with us. There's kind of this awkward silence. You know, we hit five. We go up the elevator. She's like, oh, can you hit six? London hits six for her. Um, right. I was going good so far. Yeah, you're doing great. And instead of just leaving it nice and quiet, London looks at her. He's like, I'm a resident all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. We're stifling our laughter at this point. <laughs> and if that wasn't bad enough, London, what, what did you tell the lady next? I don't... Look, I don't want to... Oh, no, London. What was it? I don't want to... She's clearly weirded out by this creepy, scrawny dude. Yeah. And he's he goes probably, like, sweating to, all over. Yeah, and to kill the silence, he's like... And and this is my attending, <laughs> as if I'm some oh. yeah, just prize to show off. Oh my god! And everyone, I mean, everyone else knows better. Yeah, everyone London Smith been is just not. like losing their mind. Yeah. So well, and the thing is, Doctor Dank had told us previously. Oh, feel free. I'm a bragging right. You having me on your team is the best thing for you. Yeah. And so. I, I translated this as, oh, let introduce me to everyone in the elevator. Just yeah. show show them up. So uh, anyway, Doctor London, it sounds like you got pranked by the dank. <laughs> and so I, am I right? Yeah, and so I'm. Say it. I got pranked by the dank, and I'm there. It is. I'm glad for your sake, Cameron, that he's not making you say it the way I. Have to. I guess it's only people who worked sort of under him. Um, I just don't want to have to like pay the royalties for it. Yeah. So anyway, uh, and I, I guess Dr. Dang. So we're, we're teaching our listeners about large cell carcinoma. So maybe, maybe instead of, you know, uncomfortable stories about me, cause we don't know. So that, that girl I liked that was in there. Um, yeah. That made you she, proud until you cried. I, I was the the pushing the right elevator button. Uh, I was very nervous, and so getting the pushing the correct elevator button made me feel pretty good. Introducing my attending made me feel good, but then once I realized that no one was going to be on my like backing me up for that. Anyway, it's I guess it sounds more minor than what it felt like at the moment. Oh, but at the time, it was well, worth weeping over like a little baby. I get, and I didn't want to bring up the last thing that happened there. But I guess to, to give it, because it doesn't sound like much of a story. Dr. Dank also pants me in that oh. In front of the patient. Wow. Yeah, so all that other stuff that you just could have skipped all of that and just said the pants in front. Well, I felt like all the of the context really just added nothing. I mean, hell, even the the fact that it's in an elevator doesn't add anything to the story. It's just that's where it happened. But the the fact that I it's a closed container space. Wow. I introduce my myself and my attending, and how does my attending reply? He pulls my pants down in front of the patient's family. Yeah. And no, I guess you're right. I guess that extra context just really added so much to the story and makes it way better. Okay, well, I don't know. Do you do you have another story? I sorry, well, this Doctor, is just my we, life. Can, we can move on from the the crying thing because it, that seems to be an issue. What about uh, Doctor Dank? Just something from the past. What about like uh, something that our listeners would want to hear? Some. Maybe a story, maybe a prank you pulled on him, or maybe I, you cut the tires on his car, or I don't, maybe I don't think you... we need more. I don't think we need more stories about me. Uh, I mean, Doctor Dank has had a very successful career. He could, 
Yeah, that's true. Dr. Dank, let's talk about you. I want to hear about you. What do you want to know? I want to know what your day-to-day life is like. So so one thing Dr. Dank, sorry, Dr. Dank always brought up was his ball and chain. Ooh. Um, yeah. I know that game. Well, and sometimes he ref- that meant his wife. Other times it did refer to a literal ball and chain that he would keep in his office. Oh, yeah. When I said I know that game, I meant tetherball. Yeah, so he... It's like a... I was so poor growing up that our our tetherball court was a... There was a ball and a chain. Instead of, you know... Really? A, like, a, like a rope or whatever. Oh. It was. So you would Bungie punch court. it. You would punch the ball. Well, yeah, I mean, I couldn't kick it, not with my toes. Yeah. Well, and even if you did, did you did you injure yourself with that? That we can move on. It, 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 you know. Okay. Well, so I mean, it's not a much better story for me because it's. So he kept this ball and chain in his office, and one of his pranks was, you know, when we're waiting, we're on call. Uh, you know, the the interns, you know, will we'll be going like if a patient does coding, for example, we'll we'll mm-hmm. have to run over there. So one of his pranks would be to chain one of us up so that we would have to find a way to escape from that to to to, to go see a patient when we yeah. and we need to. We need to. And he would just sit there laughing at us whenever That's we could. That's pretty funny. I don't, Dr. Dank, do you I mean Did anyone was, die because of that? I mean, they're dead when they're coding. So because of that, no, but didn't help oh, their okay, case. Oh, okay, yeah. But, I mean, I want so my interns to be resourceful. Yeah, he, he kept emphasizing resourcefulness. So he would give us, he would throw me a nail file mm-hmm. and say, be a doctor. Wow. And so, so that I, kind of I thing. I basically just did a semester of medical school, didn't I? Yes. No, I, because it's, I would say that so far, no doctor before that, nor any doctor I've worked with after that has had such a policy. But is that pretty much everything he taught you is just sort of throwing stuff at you and saying, be a doctor? Because if so, then that, I mean, that's a semester of school right there. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I guess if we want to break it down to that. Dr. Dank, do you have a, do you have a curriculum or something? How, how does this work? I don't actually know how medicine works it's very free form that's my curriculum i kind of alternate objects i throw at my interns and most of the time my intern was london smith yeah um but i actually do want to ask him where did you go after those first six months i well i applied to a different specialty because because well, and like, well, at first I complained to the board, and they said, "No, man, that guy's sweet. That guy's awesome." Uh, apparently, yeah. Doctor Dank was very popular, and had a lot of influence. So every time that I tried to move, like, to to go, probably somewhere was sort else, of a player. Yeah, a lot of girlfriends. He, yeah, which the interns were required to keep track of his schedule and his dates, yeah. his dinners, his luncheons, his brunchons. That was the uh, exam or whatever. It was just no, no. If, if only that were it. No, it's. It was just one of those things where yeah, I feel like I'm. I'm. I'm being mean now. Actually, I'm sorry, Doctor Dang, for 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 speaking so so freely about it. It's just this is um. I'm hearing compliments. That's all I'm hearing. Well, I yeah. I, I do want to know, Doctor Dang, what what. what brought you here today i know i invited you on the show but you did say that you wanted to be on the show what did you have a specific reason just checking in on my boy you know yeah he oh yeah okay. i mean yeah just a bro check because had i known that you were coming on I, I i don't not to be rude but i don't think i would have said yes because of i guess of your educational approach so we I don't know. On this podcast, we give medical lessons and just we say them out loud instead of, as you were saying, a free form uh, sort of sink or swim with a scalpel thrown at you at the yeah. time. And that was one thing. Anytime, 
if I said scalpel, pass me a scalpel, he would throw it. And it's not even his job to be passing it well, necessarily. Maybe just because you don't like his teaching methods doesn't mean that the teaching me- methods are incorrect, Dr. London. It's not all about you. It's not all about, oh, uh, you know, can well, is this, uh, is this like playing a video game? That's all I know how to do. I'm Dr. London. I just don't, oh, it's not like playing a video game. So I hate, I, I hate this. Yeah. I, I don't think I normally mention video games so much, but yeah, yeah. So I'm, uh, so people have the different learning types. You know, they'll, they'll be audio or visual or, you know, uh, if it's written down, whatever. Kinesthetic. Um, Kinesthetic. Yeah, whatever your aesthetic is. Throne. Th- throne, yeah. So, yeah, I guess in that sense, a lot of his learning style, his teaching style was throwing. Yeah. And pinning against a wall. Yeah, that's he's a very he's a tactile learner. Yeah. You know, it's touch, a, it's a that, kinetic. That, that, yeah. Kinetic learner. Well, a kinetic teacher, I would say, cuz I I don't know that he learns in the same way. But Yeah, that's true. He well, I mean, Doctor of... Dank. I mean, Doctor Dank. I I gotta ask: Are you a good doctor? It sounds like you can't get fired, right? I mean, would you? How would you rate yourself? Your your own medical skills, like on a scale of one to ten. Rank myself? Yeah. He's gotten a lot we, of awards. I I have, so I think those speak for themselves. I'd like to hear London Smith. Yeah. Well, okay, because yes, he he was constantly being given awards, and it was. Very frustrating to be around it because, for one thing, he would throw those awards. Yeah, I. They're heavy. None of, I bet. Yes, and he would ask for the like, if if someone gave him you know just a badge or something, he would ask for it in plaque form because he liked to have sort of an overhand or a frisbee motion. He, it needed to to be heavy. He would actually, sure. and he would send it out for special order to have, uh, like a lead backing put on it so that it would be heavier for when he threw it. And I, for for me, this is all frustrating to, to a large degree because I, I don't want to be on the receiving end of that um, because I'm trying to to treat patients and to learn and to have exposure to medicine. Mm -hmm. And, but yeah, Dr. Dang, um, you know, I said earlier that I had transferred to another hospital after those six months. I, I took a medical leave for for a few months oh is that when you disappeared for a while yeah i just and dear my I didn't hear from you i didn't see you yeah it was when you came back a, like a lot of your clothes still had like like sand on it just a sh- just a ton of sand yeah well that's because i got stuck in a ravine but that's kind of neither he nor there i'm just saying so there are different learning styles and i feel like what ravine uh i mean it, i don't know that it has a name it was did big you, enough for me to fall down did you cry when you fell into it i well that's yes dr london you are a big baby aren't that's, you it, like once again it is neither here nor that and <laughs> Look, Dr. Dang, it's, I I thought this, when I first saw you, I thought maybe this could be therapeutic for me, but mostly this is bringing up a lot of memories. Frankly, I, I kind of saw you, Dr. Dang, as a bully at the time. And I know you, you kept saying, like you kept, you made us buy multiple copies of your book on how to teach medicine. And you kept saying, like, use the term, throw the book at them, and then you would throw the book at us, and then you would send us an invoice. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I thought that we would get more out of this, and this is also very much like him too. He would be, he'll be silent, and he'll just hit you, and that would be his teaching method. But it and, sounds like he has made a gigantic impact on your life, wouldn't you say so, Doctor London? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, here you are talking about him. That's true. Um, I feel like that's not necessarily a good thing in a lot of capacities. But um, anyway, I guess that's a good time to go ahead and to wrap this up, huh? Right? Sure. 
I mean, yeah. Dr. Dank, you know, is is there anything you want to say? I'd like to give a thank you to Cameron. Yep. You're running the show, man. Appreciate it. You're keeping it together. It's it's tough. I got to be honest. For London, some parting words. Out of all the doctors I've worked with, you're certainly one of them. Yes. And I'll leave it at that. And I don't even know about that. I don't trust his credentials at all. I I will say while working with Dr. Dank, he would often tell me that he doesn't consider this to be working with him. So I that is a step up. That is a huge step up from what it used to be. He didn't consider me as a physician during my time with him. So uh I uh so so thank you to our guest, Dr. Dank. Thank you to uh Cameron, our producer. Thank you to Digital in the House. Dr. London, it sounds like you got pranked by the dank. For London, some parting words. Out of all the doctors I've worked with, you're certainly one of them. And I'll leave it at that. all the doctors I've worked with, you're certainly one of them. And I'll leave it at that. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, my name is Dr. London Smith. Dot com. And this has been the Jock whoa, Doc Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, Dr. London, sorry. we have to reveal the secret celebrity guest. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, I guess Our so. Our secret celebrity guest is Stanley from The Office. I would rather work for an upturned broom with a bucket for a head than work for somebody else in this office besides myself. Okay, Game on. It- this is pretzel day. I got them a toaster. They called off the I, wedding and gave I the toaster like just, back to me. I tried to return the toaster to I, the store, and I they said like they just, no longer sold that kind of toaster. So I, now I my house Wow, that's so toasters. awesome, Stanley from The Office. We're so glad to have you here. Okay, you know, so you've, Stanley, been, you've been watching this whole show. You've been, you've been hearing us go back and forth, and you've been, you know seeing dr dank you know completely pwned dr london over here do you have i mean do you have anything to to say about that she's on a honeymoon she won't be back for six weeks okay Okay. so uh stanley could we have you just say you know um thanks for listening to the jock doc podcast that'd be it'd be helpful to get that bumper i do not think that is funny Okay. 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 That's. I guess that's fair. Um, I didn't think it was that funny either. It's just I don't more care. Of a helpful promotional thing for us. I don't care. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. You made yourself clear the first time. Um. Anyway. Uh. So that was Stanley, our other celebrity, our celebrity guest. Uh. My name is Dr. London Smith. Dot com, and this has been the Jock Doc Podcast. I changed my mind. I want to keep this job. You run your hands through her hair. She murmurs something that you can't quite understand, but it sounds agreeable, so you continue. It is so relaxing to lay back like this on a blanket in this secluded area. Eyes closed, you continue exploring with your hand, untangling whatever clumps of hair are bunched together over much. Your phone vibrates, and you try to ignore it. Try to keep blocking out the world at large, but after a few seconds, you peek open one eye to see who it is. Huh. The caller ID says that it's your girlfriend. Your hand that was stroking hair is suddenly still as your other hand answers, 
and that voice you love so much comes through. Did you forget to pick me up for our picnic date again? If she's back at her place, then whose hair is this? Your eyes narrow, and you look to the luscious hair that you have been stroking, only to have the eyes of a cute little vole meet yours. Ugh, not again. Speaking of little getaways, don't forget to leave a five-star review of the Jock Talk podcast in which you expound upon the times that you have mistaken your girlfriend for a rodent. And while you're at it, go ahead and share the Jock Doc podcast with a friend or foe. You can send them a link to your favorite episode or just send them our handy website, jockdocpodcast.com. And don't forget to take a peek at our posts on social media. We are at Jock Doc Podcast. Thanks for listening.